Linux can be a tough nut on certain hardware configurations, because hardware vendors often don't really consider it big enough to provide more reliable support. Especially on laptops that run on a battery, this poor support can cause some complications like low battery life, heat problems to certain features just straight up not working. On the other hand, however, there are many success stories of Linux actually increasing a laptop's battery life, performance and due to its huge variety of different desktop environments, even the whole experience altogether. In today's video, we are going to talk about Linux on laptops, which problems or fundamental design changes you might get confronted with, and why I think that you should definitely try it out for yourself. And let's get straight into it. The main question, will Linux improve my battery life? Well, it's complicated, so let's talk about everything that relates to that question. The problem with most laptops, even on Windows, is that while they often use energy efficient hardware, there need to be good drivers in place that can properly manage the power draw. But the quality of drivers and how well they are compatible with the current version of the operating system vary. On Windows, you might be used to getting updates via Windows updates or beforehand from the vendor's website. On Linux, most drivers are already built into the kernel itself, meaning that you shouldn't have to install drivers manually at all. However, this only applies if the drivers are either open source or have already been reverse engineered. Proprietary drivers, while often still being automatically installed for you if you allow third party repositories, are more complicated, especially on your devices, whereas the vendor just hasn't released anything for Linux yet. One of the most common names include Broadcom and their network cards for Wi Fi and Bluetooth. Realtek, which also extend to some audio cards, and of course Nvidia, though it's a bit more complicated with them in particular. Anyway, while support and the automatic detection that a device needs those drivers is often not the best, from my personal experience, device support is not as bad as it seems, as long as you pick the right distribution. Not one in particular, like this one is the best, but if you are on a device purchased in the last two years, you might not want to go with an ultra stable distro like Debian, but rather something more up to date, like Arch or Fedora. Like mentioned earlier, a lot of drivers do eventually end up in the kernel and just having a new version of it can improve support. And having a fully supported device is incredibly important since it, like mentioned earlier, needs to handle the power draw for each component. Many users complain that Linux has lower battery life than Windows and sometimes it's not even close. On the other hand, however, the Lenovo Legion Go S and the Steam Deck are perfect examples on what battery life on a fully supported device on Linux can look like. So, will Linux increase battery life on your laptop? If it is fully supported, or at least most components, then there is a good chance, because Linux is just far more lightweight than Windows. Especially if you combine it with an even less resource hungry desktop environment or just a tiling window manager. Just download the distro installer on a USB stick, then boot off it and check if everything works just like that. If you have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, maybe do a quick search if additional drivers would be available, and if there are, then sure, Linux can increase battery life. Let's move on to security. If you decided to encrypt your main drive during the installation process, which is a good practice on the portable device, then you might notice that in contrast to Windows, which unlocks your device automatically with BitLocker and the Intel TPM chip, that Linux will always ask for a password. Many find entering a password before they even get to the operating system annoying and it also can lead to some problems, like if you forget that you wanted to update your system, shut it down and it gets stuck on the login screen since it's waiting to install the update, it basically waits infinitely for a user input and just drains the battery until it runs out. This approach on Linux has to do with giving the user control over unlocking your system, in contrast to Windows providing better usability by just telling you how it's unlocked. Yes, you can use the TPM chip on Linux as well to unlock it automatically, but last I tried it, the change didn't persist over updates. Ubuntu is trying to create a more solidified way to use the TPM chip anyway though, so we might see more on that later this year. Let's talk about backups. Generally speaking, make backups of your PC. I know that you might have never had any problems with it, but if it breaks once, it's then when you realize that you just lost a lot of data. When it comes to backups on Linux, there are usually two types. The ability to just roll back an update and the ability to backup files themselves. The first one is a measure against faulty updates or if something unexpected happens during the updating process. 
On some distros like Ubuntu or Fedora, you get the option to boot off an older kernel if something happened during the update and it usually fixes the issue. However, this does not help against problems with the disk itself. Windows does offer several ways on how you can keep your files safe from corruption. You can sync it to OneDrive, activate file history or do complete backups via Backup and Restore, which can save your backups to a different device. On Linux there are two tools that can achieve the same, DejaDube and TimeShift. DejaDube or Dub is basically a mix between the OneDrive integration and file history of Windows. You can connect to a cloud storage, a network share or just a different drive and easily create backups of your personal files. Timeshift on the other hand is targeted more towards restoring the system itself, though you can also use it for user data if you want. In either of these solutions, you can specify when and how often you want your backups to be made. And if something goes wrong, you can either roll back on your current PC, depending if you can still access it, or use this application on a USB drive like the installer to restore your main drive. Pretty awesome. Let's talk about one thing though. Why even install Linux to begin with if you potentially run into some of these problems or annoyances? My approach to that is… why not? It just depends on your use cases and how you use your laptop. I like to use Linux on my PCs because it offers me the capabilities to install a desktop experience that feels right to me in terms of how I use it. My new laptop is designed to run it very well, providing me with better battery life than Windows, all of my necessary software runs on it and as a bonus, I'm not confronted with updates, force installed applications or privacy concerns, since I can control essentially everything on my system. Linux on a laptop, which hardware actually supports it, is just a better choice if it fulfills all of your needs. You get the same or an even better experience without all of the here's copilot this, here's copilot that and so on. And you should definitely consider on at least trying it out for yourself, like mentioned earlier, just on a USB stick to see if your devices are properly supported. Decide if you are fine with some security features requiring more user interaction, maybe set up some backups just in case and you then get an experience that provides much less friction than Windows does. And that's where I leave it. So what do you think of Linux on laptops? Do you have any personal experiences to share? How did driver support and battery life work out for you? Please let us know in the comment section down below. Before I end this video, I quickly wanted to mention that if you want to support the channel, make even better videos, then please feel free to check out our membership program as well as our online shop, whereas each sale helps to support various open source projects. If you've liked this video, then please make sure to show it with a like and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on any future Linux videos just like this one. Thank you so much for watching and all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening wherever you are, I'll see you around.